In today's video, I'm gonna check the new Drunk Deer G75 keyboard, have a look at the last win implementation and see how it compares to Razer's SnapTap. I bought this keyboard from their Kickstarter campaign and this is why I have as well the silent switches alongside the normal ones that are pre-installed. If you decide to buy this keyboard directly from Drunk Deer or from another retailer, I suspect that you will get only one box, the one with the keyboard, but I'm not sure. On the screen now you can see what is in the box and while you are here, consider subscribing to the channel to help you grow by pressing the subscribe button. Now let's move on to the software. For this testing I was using the beta one. The software is web based and the link to the beta version is in the video's description. Take note that most new functionalities are available only using the beta software, so make sure to download the latest firmware for your keyboard by clicking get firmware button. The software has only three sections, one called color to adjust the RGB of your keyboard, the performance section where we can set rapid trigger, enable or disable turbo and set RTF plus functionalities. The latter will not work with turbo mode enabled so have that in mind. Also, when turbo mode is enabled, the keyboard sets all keys to blue, it bypasses anything you set in the color section and there is no way around it. The remap section obviously is where you can remap keys. To adjust rapid trigger, you just need to select a key or several and adjust the actuation point to your liking. This keyboard can go as low as 0.2 mm but it cannot go below that value when it comes to the actuation point. On the upside, you can set the downstroke and upstroke values by increments of 0.1 mm. As previously mentioned, if you enable turbo mode, RT plus functionalities will not be usable. You have to choose one or the other. In order to set up LastWin, a functionality similar to Razer SnapTap or Wooting SOCD, you just have to enable it, followed by choosing two keys that you wish to use for this functionality. Let me show you how LastWin behaves. In Notepad, if I hold down a key, one of the ones set in LastWin section, and press the other one, the last one is registered, if both are pressed. When I lift my finger from one, it registers the other one that is still pressed, exactly like Razer SnapTap. Let's have a look at this functionality in some games. First, Overwatch 2. To be honest, as I set the upstroke and downstroke to 0.1mm, it is really easy to do quick strafes regardless if functionality is enabled or not. I tested with it enabled and with it disabled alongside Turbo Mode On. I prefer to use Turbo Mode On as it feels a bit more responsive, but I don't have a way to validate this as I don't have a high speed camera. The keyboard felt responsive either way and this may be my brain suggesting this as I enabled a function that should enhance the performance. At the time of recording this, SnapTap, LastWin or SOCD functionality was not bannable, but Valve released a statement saying that they will ban those who use these functionalities. When comparing in Counter-Strike LastWin to SnapTap, I didn't feel any difference. And to be honest, there wasn't a big difference or any with LastWin on or off. As I said in the Overwatch 2 section, by using really low values for upstroke and downstroke, you can lower the possibility that may arise with overlapping kick presses. I have to mention that my unit has an issue. Sometimes the enter key is registered without me pressing it. I enable rapid trigger for the key, set it to 0.6 mm for upstroke and downstroke and still had the issue. What I did was to change the switch with one that was provided in the box and all my issues disappeared. I tested this fix for almost two weeks to be sure that the issue was not reproducible anymore and that's why it took so long to release this video. Another minor thing is that the replacement switches that came in the keyboard's box were silent, not the same as the ones that were pre-installed on the keyboard. I believe that quality control is not the best or it is like this because I have it from their Kickstarter program. 
when it comes to beer quality, it is okay, nothing extraordinary. As expected, as this is made of plastic, it's not that heavy. The keyboard feels sturdy, and the keycaps that the keyboard came with are PBT, but not shine through. I'm not sure how well it will hold the silicone or rubber material that you can see on the keyboard surrounding the keys. Only time will tell, as this keyboard just came out. If you are interested in how the keyboard sounds with the normal switches, I added this part at the end of the video and timestamped it for you to be able to go directly at that section. Is this keyboard perfect at this price range? For my use case, it's really good, as I can use it for gaming and work. It has all the keys that I need and this 75% format has the same length as the 65% keyboards. It is a bit taller as it has the function key row. I would have loved that the RGB settings are maintained when enabling turbo mode, but this is a minor inconvenience, at least for me. If you found the video helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button and drop a comment below and let me know if you would consider these less expensive keyboard offerings or you would save up more money and just buy a Wooting or a Razer keyboard or any other known brand with the same functionality. Thanks for watching and hope to see you all in the next one.